Okay, so let's have a look at uh, how subnetting might work in this particular case. Um, so we've got uh, several subnets here. So we've got uh, 128.96 is the network because that would be a class B, but the subnet we're actually using, we're actually dividing it down so we can see the subnet mask here is 255.255.255.128. So that will be 25 bits of network uh, and seven bits of host. So this means that the last digit in an IP address, if it's less than 128, will be on this subnet. If it's more than 128, it won't be on that subnet. Uh, in fact, it will actually be on this subnet here, which is uh, the 128.96.34.128 subnet. Again, it's using the same subnet mask because the size of the subnet is the same. And that's really what the subnet mask actually lets you pick out is the size of the subnet. Uh, so we could have, for example, some host, which is 128.96.34.15. So its default route uh, might be 128.96.34.1. And this is quite common to use dot one uh, or the highest number uh, that's available, like uh, a dot 255, sorry, often the 254, because the dot 255, the very highest number is often used as the broadcast address uh, on IP subnets. Uh, and so that router, then also has a link uh, to the other subnet where its IP address is uh, 128.96.34.130. So the router has two IP addresses, one for each interface it's connected to. And this is quite important. Uh, this is the way that IP works. If you're on a network, uh, you have to be addressable on that network, which means you have to have an IP address that's valid on that network. Uh, and now we might have uh, another subnet here. So this one is 128.96.33.0. And now this subnet has a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, which means that uh, there's 24 bits of network and eight bits of host. So anything in that last uh, IP address byte will be on that network. Um, so we could have host three, which is uh, 128.96.33.14, or we could also have another host that might be 128.96.33.207 for example. And again, the router between these two links has uh, an IP address on each interface it's connected to. So if we have a look for router one, um, it's forwarding table. So it will say uh, for subnet number 34.0 with the subnet mask 255.128, I'm just skipping the first bytes because they're the same each time here, would be interface zero. So this is its interface zero. Uh, interface one, is with the 34.128 uh, subnet. And um, the 33.0 interface, we know we get to via uh, the router R2. So we say the next hop is R2. Uh, so 128.96.33.1. So if it wanted to send, uh, if you want to send a, a packet from H1 to H3, um, H1 will uh, you know, it'll go, okay, this is not on the same network as myself. I need to send it to my default route because it's only connected to one interface, which is uh, 34.1. So the IP address of the destination will still be 33.14, but the ethernet address, um, or the, if it's not using ethernet, whichever uh, networking system is uh, using as a physical and data link layer, uh, that will be addressed to uh, the router uh, device, its in network interface. That will come into router one. Router one will say, okay, to get to 33.14, um, look in my table, that's 33.14 matches this subnet mask and network number. I need to send it to router two. So it will send it out on this interface, still with the destination IP address as 33.14. Uh, but again, the ethernet uh, destination address will be that of router two. Router two will receive it. Uh, and say, okay, it's for 33.14. That is directly connected to one of my interfaces. I can directly deliver that packet. So uh, that's how that will work in that context. Uh, so the nice thing actually with these subnet masks, and they were designed for this ease of computation, uh, is that we can look at every destination IP address and look at the list in our set of subnets. And if we and the subnet mask with uh, the IP address we're trying to get to, this will give us the subnet number. And then we can just look to see if the subnet number matches uh, any of the um, 
uh, the subnets that we have. And if it does, uh, then we can deliver it uh, via that the, to if it's to an interface, or if it's a router, then we will deliver it to uh, the next hop uh, that's listed uh, in that entry in the forwarding or routing table that we have. So again, um, if there's no other option, you use the default route. This is what default uh, router means. Um, you don't have to have all the ones in the subnet mask to be contiguous, because again, it's just doing the binary and. You could do weird things with having some zeros higher up in there. I'm not saying that this is a good idea, uh, but you can actually do it. Uh, and most network stacks will let you do that. Um, and you can also have multiple subnets on one physical network. Uh, and so each of those subnets will not be visible to each other. Um, they would need to have a router between them, uh, but that router could just have that one interface on uh, to reach them. Uh, and finally, of course, the, the existence of the subnets is not visible from the rest of the internet. So the rest of the internet will probably still just route directly to uh, the, you know, the class A, B or C network. Um, again, this is in the traditional way that IPv4 addressing uh, and routing was done because we have classless addressing instead, which is now how it largely works. <laughs>